Bill O'Reilly here Friday, February 7th, 2020. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Now that the Democrat impeachment exercise is finally wrapped up, the country can get back to more pressing matters, health care, immigration, and of course, the upcoming 2020 presidential election. The latest polls have Donald Trump more popular than at any other point since his inauguration. Despite his strong numbers, the country does remain deeply divided. In 2016, Mr. Trump won the White House by demolishing the so-called Blue Wall, taking Democrat-leaning states that have not gone towards a Republican in decades. The same could be true this November. Here are the battleground states that will decide the 2020 election. President Trump hoping to retake the Midwest. Recent polling in places like Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania have Mr. Trump beating most Democratic candidates in a hypothetical head-to-head race. But the president does trail Joe Biden by two points in some of those states. The Southwest in play, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Mr. Trump split those states with Hillary Clinton back in 2016, but most were close, within five points. Some on the East Coast are in play, like Virginia and North Carolina. Hillary Clinton took Virginia's 13 electoral delegates by just 200,000 votes out of 4 million. Donald Trump won North Carolina by an even smaller margin. Down to Florida, the big one, 29 electoral votes in a state evenly split between Democrats and Republicans. Donald Trump took the state in 2016 by just 1% of the vote. Current polling shows a statistical tie between the president and Joe Biden, but I was just in Florida. The economy is booming there, so I'm going to give the advantage to President Trump. In all, Nearly 40 states are a lock for both parties. On Election Day, Democrats will start with roughly 190 electoral votes from places like New York and California, and Republicans will have 160. It takes 270 electoral votes to win the White House. But if the Democrats nominate a far-left candidate like Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, many more states will be in play this time around, as socialism is not popular with Americans, according to the polls. In a moment, the political backlash of impeachment. Right back. Computer systems in cars are now common. There are electronically controlled transmissions, touchscreen displays, dozens of sensors. All this advanced tech is expensive to fix if it breaks. That's why I have Car Shield. Car Shield has affordable protection plans that can save you thousands for repairs, including computers, GPS, electronics, and more. With Car Shield, you choose your plan and your favorite mechanic or dealership to do the work. Car Shield takes care of the rest. They also offer 24-7 roadside assistance and a rental car while your car is being fixed. Free! So drive with confidence knowing you have coverage from America's number one auto protection provider. Get covered by Car Shield today. Please call 800 800- C-A-R-6000, and mention code BILL, or visit carshield.com and use code BILL to save 10%. That's carshield.com, code BILL, a deductible may apply. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, the unintended consequences and backlash of impeachment. This has been a pretty interesting week with the State of the Union address and President Trump being acquitted in the Senate on charges of obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. Now, the president is angry that he had to endure the ordeal, and many Americans believe it was a political exercise. So let's go down the list of people affected directly by the impeachment play. President Trump is a short-term winner, The polls show his job approval rating rising, as some Americans say, hey, this was a waste of time, and almost feel sorry for Donald Trump, which is kind of hard to do. But in the long term, we will not know how it affects the president until the November vote. Nancy Pelosi 
is a big loser because she ripped up the State of the Union address. Now, that was an immature, impulsive thing to do, and the whole country saw it. We all know Nancy Pelosi despises Donald Trump, and that's fine. But it isn't fine to disrespect the office of the presidency and her own House of Representatives. Now, some believe, and I am in this group, that Democrats may lose the House because of Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Gerald Nadler, all of those people. Americans say, you know what? Enough's enough here. Now, I could be wrong on that. It's very far out. But... Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats in the House of Representatives at the State of the Union Address and at impeachment did not help themselves. Mitt Rodney, huge loser. I can't quite figure this out. So the senator from Utah voted to acquit President Trump on charges of obstruction of Congress, but voted to remove him, kick him out of office for abuse of power. Romney explained this vote, and he was the only Republican in Congress out of all the Congress people, all the senators. He's the only Republican to vote for removal. He said his conscience dictated that. But when you are deciding a trial, and this was an impeachment trial, you do not make your decision based on your conscience. You can feel that someone is guilty. You can believe that. But unless the evidence proves it beyond a reasonable doubt, you can't vote for conviction. That's called due process. I don't understand why Mitt Romney doesn't understand. But he's done in the Republican Party, and I don't know, I wouldn't vote for him if I were a GOP person in Utah. Senator Doug Jones in Alabama, you may not have ever heard of him, but he's a Democrat, and he holds that seat. He's through. Alabamans will reject Senator Doug Jones for voting to remove President Trump come November. The USA, the whole country lost on this. It was not a plus. It did not put us in a good light in the world and accomplished nothing. America not helped by impeachment. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by actually writing it. You can reach me at bill at billoreilly.com. In a moment, something you might not know. We've all gotten an expert appraisal for things that are valuable. A realtor for our homes, an auto dealer for our cars, a jeweler for heirlooms. But you may have something even more valuable than any of those things, your life insurance policy. If you are 75 years or older with a policy worth $100,000 or more, My friend at We Buy 75 will appraise it free and show you how much it's worth in cold, hard cash. So please call 844-WE-BUY-75 or visit webuy75.com. One word, webuy75.com. Imagine never having to pay a life insurance premium again. There's no greater feeling than having all that cash you need for your necessities and fun stuff, too. You've seen We Buy 75 on TV, heard them on the radio, so what have you got to lose? You can get very good money. Please call 844-WE-BUY-75 or visit webuy75.com today. Now the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Americans work more hours than any other people on the planet. On average, full-time employees in the USA dedicate 47 hours per week to their jobs, compared to just 37 for most Europeans. With all our work, it's no surprise Americans love their hobbies. Here's how we spent most of our free time in 2019. The biggest increase last year was in personal devices. The average U.S. adult spent three hours, 45 minutes per day on their smartphones and tablets. Our TVs got to work out as well, with Americans accumulating three and a half hours a day, in front of the boob tube. Fortunately, Americans haven't completely given up more traditional hobbies. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, 150 million Americans participated in wildlife recreation, that's what they call it, last year. Most popular, hunting, 
followed by fishing, hiking, and surfing. Americans also enjoyed exercising their Second Amendment rights. About 60 million of us go to target shooting at least once a year. For some perspective, there's more people and play soccer, football, or baseball. Most popular weapon, the 9mm handgun. The number of Americans golfing jumped 10% in 19. An estimated 24 million Americans hit the links. There are more than 20,000 golf courses around the country. An additional 15 million Americans spent some time at the driving range. Board games, another popular activity. The classics, still the biggest sellers. Monopoly, Scrabble, and Trivial Pursuit. Studies show roughly one out of ten Americans play board games with friends or family at least once a week. The newest hobby on the list, knitting. Once considered a pastime for the elderly, social media sites have popularized knitting among millennials and younger Americans. Biggest item, Christmas socks. So, the next time you're thinking about posting on Facebook or watching hours of videos on YouTube or looking at some dopey network television program, remember, there is a lot of knitting to be done. Right back. Deborah's home was stolen. I don't mean thieves stole stuff. I mean scammers literally stole her home. The FBI calls home title theft one of the fastest growing white collar crimes. This story is why you need home title lock. Deborah says, quote, criminals found the title to our home online and filed fraudulent documents claiming they owned it. And it gets worse. Deborah, quote, I was evicted from my own home, and 85 grand in equity gone. Nobody believes you can get your home stolen this easy, unquote. This is why you need home title lock, because no insurance or bank protects your home from title theft. First things first, please go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim and don't know it. Then sign up to protect the legal title to your home so you don't end up like Deborah. And to get you started, I got you 60 risk-free days of protection. Please go to HomeTitleLock.com. HomeTitleLock.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. (laughs) 